The Seattle Mariners are getting back on track and are about to have a lot of their guys back from the injured list. But because of that, that means there's going to be a roster crunch. But who's going to get sent down? Who's going to get released? And who all is coming back for the Mariners? Well, there were three big ones that Ryan Divish talked about on Twitter today from Justin Hollander. First, we have to start with Dylan Moore. Dylan Moore has not seen the field at all this year after undergoing surgery at the end of the 2022 season. He was getting ready to go out on a rehab assignment, played a few games, and then unfortunately had to be pulled back because he was hurting once again. There's a chance that Demo's back, though, in just a few days. This was the first thing that Ryan Divish had to say. He said Dylan Moore will transfer his rehab assignment, and we we could see him activated on this long homestand. The homestand ends on June 1st as they have a travel day, meaning that sometime in the next eight or nine days, we should see Dylan Moore back on this roster. But if Demo comes back, who goes down? Right now, I hear every single one of you in the comments yelling, Colton Wong, the pitchforks are out. But let's be honest, it's going to be Sam Haggerty. He has options. He can be sent down to the minor leagues without risk of losing him and he's not performed at all this year in the majors. In 34 at-bats, Haggerty is hitting 147, 237, 176, with just a 21 OPS+. Plus. He does have three stolen bags, but otherwise really has not contributed anything for this lineup. If you think Colton Wong's been bad, look no further than Sam Haggerty, because he's been atrocious. And what makes Sam Haggerty so expendable is that Dylan Moore can do basically everything Sam Haggerty can do. Haggerty is a man that's pretty versatile, but so is Dylan Moore. And with Jose Caballero taking over the second base job, Dylan Moore is going to serve as a utility guy on this roster. There honestly just won't be any room, in my opinion, for Sam Haggerty at this point. And that doesn't mean that he's gone for the rest of the year. It just means that he's going to be sent out to Tacoma to hopefully get himself every day at bats and get him back into the swing of things, because he's only getting an at bat once or twice a week right right now and that's not going to get him back in any sort of groove sending him down to tacoma where he can play every single day i think sam haggerty is the perfect person to send down for now maybe bring him back up due to an injury or something later on in the season and have him be that spark plug that he was in 2022 the next one is Penn Murphy, who was dealing with some elbow inflammation. Murphy has been on the IL for a couple of weeks now. It really wasn't anything too serious, and it sounds like he should be back for the upcoming road trip. Divish says that Penn Murphy got a PRP shot a week ago and is feeling better. He's also expected to join the M's on the upcoming road trip following a brief rehab stint. Murphy has been one of the best guys out of the Mariners' bullpen so far this year, and one of the guys who's seen the most reps before going on the injured list. As for who we get rid of at that point... I think it'll probably be DFA and Chris Flexen. The way Chris Flexen's contract works means that after June 1st, he has two options if he wants to get DFA. He can either accept his assignment out to Tacoma and get sent out of AAA and keep his salary, or he can refuse it, become a free agent, and not get to keep his salary. Meaning that after June 1st, if Chris Flexen was to get DFA'd and he decided to become a free agent, he would lose out on like the 4 or $5 million he'd still be making in 2023. So if the Mariners were to wait until June 1st, which is what they'd be doing if they waited until the road trip to add Penn Murphy, and then they DFA'd Chris Flexen, then there's a good chance he stays with the organization down in Tacoma. I'm not saying this is something the Mariners are really planning on doing, but the time frame does work out for them for where they can keep Chris Flexen in this organization more than likely because there's no way that he's going to not accept that outright assignment if it means that he's going to have to lose his salary. Penn Murphy is a guy that we would love to have come back. But speaking of the bullpen, there's one more guy we need to talk about, and that is Andres Munoz, who we feel like we haven't seen at all so far this year. Andres Munoz has only pitched in a few games for the Mariners before going on the injured list. Divish says that Munoz, who had a deltoid strain, was scheduled to throw a light bullpen today. Per Hollander, Munoz told the medical staff this is the best he's felt since spring. The hope is after a rehab stint, he will join the Mariners on the upcoming road trip June 1st through the 11th. There have been plenty of times over the Mariners kind of slumping weeks that Andres Munoz would have made a huge difference for them. In times where you need a strikeout, Andres Munoz has always been that guy. And it sounds like he'll be coming back in just a little over a week's time. The problem is, who do you get rid of for Andres Munoz? If you're already DFAing Chris Flexen for Penn Murphy, who is going down for Andres Munoz? Because you can't send down someone like Taylor Trammell because you can only carry 13 pitchers, so you have to send down a pitcher. And in my opinion, this is where things get a little bit tough. Because, of course, let's say there's no injury or anything that has someone blow up. Let's say everybody is perfectly healthy when Andres Munoz is ready to come back. I think there are only two pitchers that you think about sending down to AAA Tacoma to bring Andres Munoz back to the big league club. And those two pitchers are Juan Brash. Ten and Matt Brash. Brash. I know, Brash has been relatively decent in his last couple of outings, but we've seen him blow up from time to time this season, and he has not been able to command the strike zone. Juan Ten, on the other hand, has been pretty consistent for the Mariners, albeit in low leverage roles. But which guy would you rather have on your team right now? Personally, I would lean towards Juan Ten, 
but if we see a few more outings of Matt Brash looking like his old self, then I lean back towards Brash and send Juan 10 down. Unfortunately, in this case, it's who's going to be the odd man out of that bullpen, and I still don't know who it's going to be as of recording this video. I think either guy would be fine to send down. It's not a for sure thing that they're going to be down for very long. Of course, injuries can always happen, especially in the bullpen. So who really knows what could happen between now and then? But the addition of Andres Munoz, Penn Murphy, and Dylan Moore make the Mariners a much better team than they were just a couple of days ago. And with the Mariners looking to get on the right side of 500, these moves are going to be a big boost for this team. So once it was all said and done, the Mariners ended up with Jose Caballero. As Ryan Divish says here, Jose Caballero, who was turning 23 on August 30th of that year, 